Hey guys, we have an interesting week full of planetary transits. We have a bunch of colorful stuff going on alignment wise. Venus is going into Virgo, which is going to change the tone romantically from a more extroverted approach to a more inward approach that helps us be choosier when it comes down to our love life and finances. Venus will be making most of the alignments this week, which is going to cause us to focus on relationships and our finances. Again, this is going to be an interesting week in the sense where we have a big focal point when it comes down to relationships. We have a big focal point when it comes down to finances, when it comes down to our self-esteem and our confidence because Venus looks at those things, Venus rules those things. So this week we'll definitely put an emphasis on those things. And all three personal planets are connecting to Jupiter. And even though two of them are hard, it's going to put a lot of optimism and luck in the air. So we won't be afraid to take risk. And boy, do the vibes on the graph reflect that. The vibes on the graph, I'm welcoming these vibes compared to the ones we've had over the last bunch of weeks. These vibes are not as harsh. The harder alignments we have this week, some of them are edgy, but they're tame in comparison. We have quite the Jupiterian week with three all three personal planets hitting Jupiter. So this puts a bunch of good luck energy in the air, but also a lot of motivation, drive, optimism, and feeling more sure of ourselves and going after opportunities. So we will have some confidence moments through this week. I mean, there are some fluctuating confidence moments, but this week, we might feel more sure of ourselves and take more risk than normal. There's also a bunch of mental energy in the air as you get from the first all the way up to the fourth. So our minds can be on a game plan. Our minds could be on what our next steps are. Our minds could be all about creating some sort of strategy that's going to help us benefit, especially when it comes down to all the Venus alignments. This could have a lot to do with our self-esteem. This could have a lot to do with our finances. And this could have a lot to do with thinking about which opportunities are right for us. So yeah, this is an interesting week for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. The 29th is an interesting day with Venus making a sesqui quadrate to Jupiter and Mercury making a sesqui quadrate to Uranus. So that day is going to be revved up communication wise, social wise, and in a way that's mixed bag because with the Venus sesqui quadrate Jupiter situation, we can feel in the mood to be social. We can feel celebratory. Venus and Jupiter alignments, they tend to bring that out in us. They tend to bring out the excessive side in us. So there, this could be a day of decadence. This could be a day of just doing things that are on the extreme end in terms of spending splurging, eating, and just overall getting carried away on that day. Relationship wise, this may not be the best energy. It's great for superficial things and having fun and just enjoying yourself, but it is a very surface level energy. This is the type of thing where people can be over the top, but it's not genuine over the top. It's just, it's more so to get your attention and get what they want. So you want to be aware of that. And again, you want to be aware of being overboard in this energy because we can really overdo it. It's fun, but it can definitely be a lot, especially with Mercury making this sesquiquadrate to Uranus. This can throw things off. This can cause shocking surprises in a lot of ways. And shocking surprises in the sense of people making the wrong first impression. Shocking surprises in the sense of communication going either wrong, it's going right, and then it goes awry. There could be unexpected communication from people that you're not interested in talking to with these. Sometimes with Mercury, a lot of times with Mercury, Uranus connections. Mercury is our communication. Uranus is the higher octave, and it brings in the surprise communication. So there could be a day of that. You definitely want to make sure you're also not coming off contradictory or coming off in a way where you're just being off kilter or causing off kilterness around people because it brings that sort of element in. It also brings in a changeableness about what you want and your needs. And you know, one minute you're into something, next minute you're not. This can translate into relationships with that Venus Jupiter situation. So it brings about a weird energy. It also brings about a, a risky energy as well. So you could be open to taking some extra risk this day. And again, with all that Jupiter stuff going on, it's easy to take those risks. And with the Uranus Mercury stuff, it's easy to be confident enough to take some reckless risks. So make sure the risks you're taking are worthwhile and aren't going to be some that could be problematic later on. On the 30th, the sun's going to make a quincunx with Jupiter. So if you've been looking for 
for an excuse to be carried away, this is the perfect energy for that. And again, there's a carried away vibe to the air and this is where all the optimism and luck is coming from because we just feel risky. We feel like just going for it, whatever going for it might be for us. It's a fun energy. So, you know, it's about going out, having an adventure, enjoying yourself, being very social with everybody. But what can happen here with this energy is we become overly confident. Our ego gets inflated and sometimes we need to be very mindful about what we're doing. We need to be mindful about being too frivolous when it comes down to our finances and other things and the way we communicate with others. We may come on too strong. We may come off a bit egotistical within this energy and not realize it. There can be a tendency to overreact to and take things the wrong way because our ego is so inflated. So if someone comes in and puts a pin in it, we can overreact from that. Also, if someone's bending the truth, there can be a disproportionate reaction to that. Obviously, when someone's being dishonest, we definitely have the right to react to it, but you just want to make sure you're reacting appropriately to the misdeeds. Speaking of truth, that same day, Venus is going to make a quincunx with Neptune. And this has a lot to do with dealing with a relationship that leaves you in a constant state of confusion. So with this alignment, we're coming to realizations where we've been unrealistic when it comes to a relationship in terms of our expectations, in terms of what this person can give us, in terms of ignoring dishonesty or possibly being dishonest yourself within the relationship. And a lot of times this comes up because, you know, either it was a self-esteem issue that caused us to accept things that we shouldn't accept. So that can come up within this. And this could be a time where you're kind of waking up to that. And there's a bit of a reality check when it comes to it. So you're trying to work through that and figure out what to do next, what your next step is when it comes down to this relationship. If this energy is channeled properly, the great thing is you can use it for artsy things and creativity. And there's a lot of creativity in the air around a lot of this Jupiterian stuff that's going on. So use it for that and to channel it properly. But if you're one of those people that has things to address within a relationship, this is the time to actually work through those things. So that way you can either move forward or fix a situation that's fixable. That next day, Mercury's making a sesquiquadrate with Saturn. In this energy, it's interesting because the energy that we have going on September 1st, some of it is a completely different kind of vibe. So there may be some conflicting feelings that day. With Mercury and Saturn coming together like this, we could feel slightly numb. We could feel like shutting down. We could feel as though we're just not wanting to deal with people so much. Although there's a lot of social energy that's coming up through this week, we just may not be into it communication wise. So we could have moments where we're just needing time to ourselves. We can have moments where we just need to be in our heads. And, you know, sometimes being in our heads, you know, it's good for us, obviously, but then there are times where it can be a bit much. And so this could be one of those days where it's a little bit heavy. So try to do your best to work through some of these icy feelings that you might be experiencing on that day. That same day, Mars is making a lovely alignment with Jupiter. Mars is making a sextile with Jupiter and with Mars sextile Jupiter, this is amazing for taking action on big goals, big dreams, and ideas that you have. This is one of those Mars Jupiter alignments we want. This is not the alignments where, you know, you can get into a bar fight and that's the opportunity you're taking. This is one of those where if you've been working on something, if you've been focusing on something, right now you're able to apply yourself correctly so that way you can take advantage of whatever opportunities you have in front of you. This is also good for taking advantage of rare opportunities as well. With this energy, we feel more confident in ourselves, even with all the other stuff that's going on. There's a level of confidence that pops up within this. So you're able to just go forward with things. Even if that means rejection, you're just looking at it as, you know, the worst they can say is no. And if they say no, I have my eggs in another basket. Because within this, with having it, having Mars in Gemini is great because we don't put our eggs in one basket when it comes down to the actions we're taking. And applying this to Jupiter, that happens to be in Aries. This is all about blazing a trail in your life and taking a path that you feel confident about. So this is going to be lovely energy. It's going to be very encouraging energy to help you move ahead on whatever you need to move ahead on. This is also good romantically. Um, romantically, this could definitely bring up some situations where things are fun, flirty. Um, it's definitely a very intimate and passionate sort of energy. So, you know, if you're in a dating situation, this could be a time where you're having a lot of fun in that way. It could be just hookup energy, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun. If you're in a romantic relationship, this could really rev up the passion and make it very expansive, make it over the top with the two of you. So this is going to be that type of energy that's going to be fun in that sort of way and very social. And this is why it contradicts some of the other stuff that's going on. Because again, that same day, we do have another alignment that's uncomfortable. Venus is making a queen comes with Pluto. And the thing with this alignment is it can cause us to have some poor reactions if we don't get our way. So this can pronounce unhealthy reactions in 
in relationships that are unhealthy, in financial situations that are unhealthy, where we need to basically check our reactions and make sure they're not becoming overpowering, but also be aware of other people's reactions to us that might be overpowering as well. This could bring up suspicious situations in relationships. It could expose secrets in relationships where things were just not on the up and up. This also just, it just has a tendency to pronounce the unhealthy sides of love and money. And obviously in unhealthy relationship, this stuff is going to come out. It's going to bubble up to the surface. This is stuff that needs to be addressed. This is areas where you might need to stand up for yourself and speak up when there, when it comes to injustices in relationships. So there could be a lot of that going on on that day. Hopefully most of the Jupiter stuff is hitting you guys, but these harder transits come up so we can work through the issues that we need to take care of. So that way we're living our best life. That way we're leveling up. That way we're moving forward from situations that are not healthy for us and not the way, you know, life should be lived or a relationship should be experienced. So do the best you can when this energy hits. Because the next day on the second, Mercury's making an opposition with Jupiter. Now, Mercury and Jupiter coming together like this, not the hardest of hard alignments. However, this is the one of those alignments where things can be a little bit over the top. Again, this is a week where reactions might bubble over and come out in a way that's disproportionate to what happened. This can cause us to blow up in an out of proportion sort of way when it comes down to things. We may take things the wrong way. We might be a bit edgy. So that could be problematic. This is the type of energy where we can feel overconfident and shoot our shot on certain things, which there's nothing wrong with that. Again, we've got all this Jupiterian energy, which is lovely and fantastic because it is going to give us the opportunity to take risks and go after things. And it does bring in this air of good luck and confidence. However, you just want to make sure that you're not being delusional about some of the luck, especially with this. Mercury opposed Jupiter. Sometimes we can think luck is on our side and we can end up doing some risky things as a result of it. You want to make sure that it's not something that you're just experiencing. You want to make sure it's not coming from a place of euphoria. You want to make sure it's coming from an actual concrete place before you take that kind of action. So make sure you're not coming from, you make sure you're not scattered. Make sure this is not some grand scheme or get rich quick scheme. Make sure you're looking at all the details of something because that can happen in this energy. You don't want to lose your money to a get rich quick scheme. One of those pyramid schemes. There's so many out there. Like, I mean, they just keep making things up at this point. You just want to make sure that all is well when it comes down to this. And again, and I, I always say this, you know, people have reached you on the internet. You want to make sure the DMs you're getting are not from erroneous accounts. And even so, I would still be aware of someone who's offering you something that you don't even know. So you want to make sure that someone who's just showing up in your inbox isn't offering you something that seems like it's too good to be true because it might be too good to be true. And why is a stranger going to offer that to you? Just be aware when it comes down to that. Be as skeptical as possible and make sure you're not coming from a place of euphoria. Other than that, this is great for having energy. This is great for having a lot of mental stamina, a lot of verbal stamina. So it's great for having inexhaustible amount of social energy and big ideas, but just make sure those big ideas are not coming coming from a place of, again, euphoria or coming from a place of a pie in the sky mentality. And, you know, we just need to stay mindful as possible because the next day the sun's going to make a sesquiquadrate with Pluto. And this may be one of those alignments where we're dealing with cocky people again. We're dealing with dominant people. We're dealing with people who are assholes. We're dealing with people who need to have the last word. We're dealing with people who stroke their egos by putting other people down. So they puff themselves up by making other people feel small. This could be a situation where people are needing to boost their confidence in the most unhealthy way possible. So it can be very powerful power struggle that day. It could be very argumentative that day. People can just take things to the extreme, especially when it comes down to egotistical things and wounded egos and things like that. So just do the best you can when this energy hits and try to ground yourself. And if you have the luxury to, try not to engage with people who have that sort of attitude. On the fourth, Venus enters Virgo. So Venus is leaving Leo and it is definitely changing the tone from a passionate, let's open ourselves up to love and put ourselves out there and open our hearts up to a more choosy approach when it comes down to our love and finances. Venus also happens to be in fall position in Virgo. This has a lot to do with essential dignities in astrology. There's so many astrological combinations that we're going to have times where things are going to work the best way possible. And then we're going to have times where there might be a little bit of conflict. Does that mean that this planet is never going to work well? No, absolutely not. There are just certain things that are a little bit contradictory. And so there may be some sort of mix up at times. So things have a tendency to get complex and it, the expression can be somewhat harsh at times when you have these types of combinations. Venus rules Taurus and Libra.
Libra and is exalted in Pisces. And Pisces happens to be the opposite of Virgo. So when you have something like that, it, de- it can cause a little bit of conflict with a combination. One of the main reasons also is Venus likes to be loose and free. Venus likes to let its hair down. Venus likes to throw caution to the wind. Venus is not caring so much about all of the details and looking at every little nook and cranny of something. Venus just wants to have fun and have a little bit of abandonment and enjoy and be celebratory and drink and things like that. And this is why it works well in Pisces. Pisces is loose and free. Pisces has no boundaries. Venus is the lower octave of Neptune. So that works well. And so when you put a Mercury ruled sign such as Virgo in here, it can create some rigidity. And of course, I will definitely get to the lower expression once we get to that. But again, just because a planet is in fall position or detriment and things like that, it doesn't mean that this planet doesn't work. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have its sweet spots. It just has to work harder. And people who have these natally, they generally end up being more successful a lot of the times than most people because they have to work harder than everyone else to get to where they need to get. But with Venus and Virgo, we have a lot of benefits to this. And a lot of the time, It may not be looked at in this way, but transit wise, this could be very helpful for us in terms of being discerning when it comes down to our love life and our finances. This could give us a realistic look at things when we normally may not have a realistic look when it comes down to love. This could help us in terms of being more choosy and not falling into the trappings of a rom-com and thinking everything is a fantasy in a relationship. It's cool to think like that sometimes, but a lot of the times, let's be honest, that gets us in trouble. And this is the type of Venus that turns over those ugly stones and takes a big look at what might actually be under that stone and says, hey, this is dirty. This is not something I want for myself. And so it'll cast it aside until it finds that perfectly clean and smooth rock. In other words, it's not so much that when we look at people dating wise, we're going to completely judge them for everything, but it does open our eyes to certain things that we may just overlook because it, you know, the person is coming in a pretty packaging. However, there might be some sort of weird idiosyncrasies or red flags that we're overlooking, which tends to happen within the Piscean expression of this. Not all the time, but sometimes you overlook things and give people the benefit of the doubt where this Venus, this Venus doesn't allow us to give people the benefit of the doubt, which sometimes you can't do that. In all honesty, people have to earn the benefit of the doubt from you. So if you're seeing something that's out of place, and I don't mean like a hair out of place, but just something that doesn't seem quite right, this may be the type of Venus that helps you say, you know what, I'm going to walk away from this one, which is better than sticking around and hoping that things get better, even though you saw some red flags in the beginning. This is also the type of Venus that won't have us putting ourselves out there as much. Now, when it comes down to relationships and being single, there are times where you absolutely need to put yourself out there. And then there are times where we need to stand still. There are times where we need to be still. And so this could be a period where you're wanting to take your time because you've rushed into so many situations and you're wanting to make sure whenever you do get into a new situation, it's the right situation for you. So again, this is bringing up that choosy side. This is bringing up that picky side. And also the side of you that just doesn't need to be as open as you normally have been. So you may be observing people before you proceed. You may be observing people before you become open to being flirty with them, before you date them. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we need to take a step back and observe behaviors and make sure the situation is right for us. Look for the red flags too, of course, but also not always, it's not always about red flags. Sometimes it's just kind of like, hey, you and this person may not be a match and you're not trying to hammer a square peg into a round hole. And again, that's what Venus and Virgo does for us. This could also be a time when it comes down to your career. You're also not just picking just anything. You're sitting back and taking your time. You're making sure you're honing your skills and your craft so that way you find the job that's right for you. That way you find the appropriate side hustle for yourself. But not just that. This is great for looking at practical ways to make money that's going to be concrete and long lasting rather than a quick dime. This is going to definitely be one of those energies where you're finding something that's going to be solid. You're finding something that's going to be consistent that's going to bring extra revenue into your life, but also revenue that's going to be long lasting. I mean, especially when we deal with earth signs, we go into those long lasting periods and looking for something that's going to give us. So this could be a period of looking for some stability when it comes down to your finances. This is also the Venus where it's easier to develop a healthier routine. This is not an overindulgent Venus. So if you're wanting to clean your act up when it comes down to that, this is going to be amazing for that. It's easier to kind of scale back. It's easier to dial it back with this type of Venus because it's not looking for excess. It's looking for the 
of things that's going to make it healthy. And you find enjoyment in being healthy, having a balanced routine, having your life in an ordered fashion. There's a joy that's found in looking pristine and making yourself look pristine. Venus has a lot to do with the way we adorn ourselves. So this could be a time where you're polishing up your image, you're polishing up your look, you're dressing really nice, you're, you're, dressing, you're dressing in a way that makes you feel sophisticated, whatever that might mean for you. And your eye for detail is sharper than normal. So you might be able to find some of the best finds, even if they cost a little bit more, or you might be good at bargain hunting. The funny thing with Virgo is it is a sign that can go both ways when it comes down to finances. So you might be great at finding some bargains, but you also might have such a good eye. You find something or this, a couple of pieces that cost a little bit more, but they just stand out and they're long lasting and they're sensible purchases. And I will say anyone who knows a sun sign Virgo or someone with a lot of Virgo placements, those people know how to put themselves together. And it doesn't even have to be in the traditional sense. It could be in the new age sense. They're just put together in some sort of way. Nothing is out of place. And so this could be a period where you're learning how to do that and you're polishing up your style. So of course, the lower vibration. This could be a hardcore Venus in the sense because you're not as open as you normally are. And this is where there is an issue. It's good to not always be open to everyone. You should never be as open to everyone. But at the same time, there has to be a fine balance where you should be open. And here's what I mean by that. Obviously, it's good to be open to dating and relationships. You want to make sure you have boundaries though, but you want to make sure that those boundaries aren't so hardcore that no one's getting in and that you're being absolutely picky about everything and this is where I say the hair is out of place it, it, this could be problematic I mean obviously you've got to date someone that you're attracted to but if something is just a little off kilter and off center you might turn down a really good person for not a great reason and I've used this analogy before but I'm going to use it again this could be a situation where you want to date someone who's six foot tall but the person you've just met is five eleven and a half and because of that half an inch you're just not, you're not going to date them. You're like, nope. You're just like, nope, this person's not six foot deal breaker. And that can happen within this energy, which is, and I'm laughing because it's, it, it, I've seen it happen. It, it can happen in this energy and it can be problematic because you could be overlooking someone who's fantastic and is going to be the love of your life over a small detail. If you're in a relationship, you want to make sure you're not turning your partner into a passion project and a fixer upper. You don't want to do that within relationships. You know, obviously it's good to help and be there and be supportive. However, if it's a situation that's out of control and you're completely trying to change someone or you're picking at something, then this could be problematic. And also too, you know, it's, it could take the passion out of a relationship if you're becoming that person's therapist or you're putting them through a Build-A-Bear workshop program. You just want to be careful when it comes down to those things within this energy because there's a tendency to be picky. There's also a tendency to be picky about our own appearance and feel as though we're not perfect. And we have to be very careful with that. We, there's a slippery slope when it comes to this. So you just want to make sure you're not picking apart your own appearance and trying to over improve something that's already perfect because this can be a confidence zapper. Venus is about our self-esteem and our confidence and our self-worth. And sometimes within the Virgo energy, it can cause some issues with that. It can cause some breakdowns within that because unfortunately within Virgo energy and those who have a lot of Virgo placements, it is an overthinking energy. It is kind of a tearing yourself sort of energy up. Not all the time, but you know, if it's a heavy day, it just could be one of those days where you're tearing yourself apart and you're picking apart things that you normally don't pick apart and you're perfectly fine. And you know, also this could translate into imposter syndrome when it comes to work and jobs and things like that and not feeling worthy or good enough. So do the best you can when this energy hits. Other than that, use it to be choosy. Use it to put up some boundaries where boundaries need to be put up and polish off the areas of your life that need polishing when it comes down to your love life, your career and finances. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later, guys.